Peace, peace. This is the Jizzle from the Wu-Tang Clan. Right now you're listening to MV Remix. That's right. Wu-Bangers. Strictly. Pro Tools. www.mvremix.com Cool. Yo. How's it going, man? Yo, what up? All right, so let's get right into this. Describe the first memorable day that comes into your head during the recording of 36 Chambers. The first memorable day? Oh, that was with um the song Protect Your Neck. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that was the, that's the first day I remember. Anything that's linked to 36 Chambers is that day recording Protect Your Neck. We were in, we were in Brooklyn. We were in Firehouse Studios. And, um, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Oh, all right. I hear this beeping thing going on. We were in Firehouse Studios, which were in Bro- which was in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. um, before it actually moved to Manhattan, and we recorded for Tech Connect. That's the first thing I remember as far as. <laughs> and sort of the vibe during the time of recording that. How does that contrast with that of recording Pro Tools? Um, it was. How does it contrast with recording Pro Tools? Yeah, in terms of basically, uh, 36 Chambers was done about 15 years ago, so there was a certain vibe in hip-hop, there was a certain vibe amongst you guys as artists. How now did recording Pro Tools change? Well, um, when, you know, recording back then, you know, we were recording as a group Pro Tools. I was basically recording as a solo artist, so it's, it's a much different approach. Where I mean, I, I have to hold a lot of weight on my own. Um, back then, we were all very thirsty and, and hungry and anxious. I mean, even nowadays, I mean, we do it because we love it. But we were just actually anxious and excited to be recording the album. And, and you know, everyone was there, you know, even before the, the session started <laughs> back then. Nowadays, you know, some brothers are late, some don't even show up to the session. So it's pretty, it's pretty pretty much different but similar in some ways you know I mean the vibe was there was strong um, and it was it was a great thing it was like the start of something brilliant no for that for that time you know, as, a, as opposed to now it's just you know it's just continuing the saga cool now back then could you still foresee yourself rapping now of, um, of course do you yeah. always predicted it would be sort of a longevity type thing as opposed to just the moment? Well, we didn't. Well, as far as, I mean, I didn't know what the outcome would be. Um, I didn't know how it would turn out, what study chip chambers would do for people, for fans, where it would go. And um, even our solo projects, I mean, Liquid Swords itself, I didn't really know where what art it would make. In the industry, I was just doing it. It was, it was something I loved to do when I wanted to do an album. We didn't know the outcome. We didn't know, like, this day, you know, that W would be so big and that Liquid Swords album would be great in the eyes of many people. So we, we had no idea, but I didn't, I wasn't looking at it like back then, looking at it now and saying, you know what, 13, 14 years from now, I, I won't even be making music because yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. I'd heard of rumors. I've always been some, so on some level, I've always been involved. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd heard a rumor that during Liquid Swords, you recorded your vocals a cappella, and then RZA matched the beats to that. Is there any truth to that? Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Who told you that? I don't remember that. And I don't, and I don't remember laying vocals to one beat and then it being taken off and put on another track. So I, I always, I've never recorded anything a cappella, not to my knowledge. Okay. So. Now, around the release of Eight Diagrams, some of the other members voiced their issues with RZA's choices. What were your feelings on them not keeping their opinions within the group, but making them public? Um, I think that, I mean, Two ways to look at it. I mean, I, I think, you know, some brothers had a right to speak their mind if they wanted to, you know, so be it. I mean, every fan has often like, my voice is not, it's kind of annoying. Can you, can you do something about that? Um, All right, I don't hear it now. All right, I don't hear it now. Hold on one second. Yeah, but um, 
I just think it was is the time. I mean, it's been a lot that has been going on within the group over the past few years, and I just think certain brothers was venting and they wanted to let off, and then some just you know, let that out while doing interviews and, and release certain things to the public. I'm not saying that I, I would have wanted about it the same way because I don't, I don't think I would have. But, um, you know, it happened and that's what it was. And, you know, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, Life is a Movie is a very different sound to your typical woo sound. And it has quite a vivid depiction of filmmaking. Is filmmaking something we're going to see you getting into? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I write rhymes in video and, and, and screenplay. I mean, that's how I get down. I'm, I mean, it's all about creative writing for me, even when I'm doing songs. I mean, uh, you can take probably two or three songs of mine, Gold, um, Killer Hills, and um, Cold World, and then you have a short film right there alone. So this is just, I mean, creative writing is something that I'm in school. And you can definitely see me doing something in film or writing a few scripts within the next few years. I mean, I had started working on some, but I never um, took the time out to really sit down and, and get into it. So I would say probably within the next few years. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing some scripts, some novels, and, and, and things of that nature from Jizza. Nice. But as far as the song, Life is a Movie, um, Wu-Tang is known to do songs that's quite different than, than the average sound or the sound that was before, the sound we may have used. I mean, because we are a group that's composed of many different MCs and, and it can just go different places with it. Mm -hmm. You know, hip-hop is universal. But um, Lizard came in with the track and he had an idea and I was feeling the vibe. I mean, the song alone, the drums alone is like hip-hop drums and, the, you know, the vibe has a cinematic feeling to it and this crazy vibe that, you know, only like to really just fall into the pocket and do it. And it, was, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't hard. Cool. Now, what's the situation with this documentary we were seeing promoted uh, last year? Um, well, this is something that's been going on for years, and uh, I've been talking I've been talking about this for years. And, um, can, you, can you hold on one second? Sure, yeah. One second. One second. No problem. Yo, I'm doing interviews right now. I have to hit you back. Oh, he hung up. Yeah. So, um, it's, I've, I've been shooting footage for quite a few years. Not all the time, not every day. But I've been shooting footage for a little while, and I've been compiling some stuff. And I had did a trailer several years ago, and I put it out, and I thought about doing a Wu-Tang documentary, but I haven't finished it. It's actually been sitting for a while now. But um, hopefully I, I'm playing, you know, get something going, man, and pop off, you know, some interesting stuff going. Cool. How did the title for Pro Tools get decided upon? Easily. I was sitting around one day, and I may have been in the studio, and I think I looked at the manual, and I, 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 it came to my mind, I said Pro Tools, and I decided to name that. Cool. So simple. <laughs> What's currently going on with your son's rapping career? Um, he's, he's good right now. I mean, he's been writing. He's not on it really, really hard as I was at that age. Mm -hmm. But, um, he's, you know, he's into producing also. He makes beats. He's in the video games. I mean, he's not going at it really, really hard right now. But, I mean, um, vibing is, is a passion for him. It's, you know, it's a thing he loves. He loves hip hop and, um, you know, he'll he'll be you know doing an album soon. He recorded several songs over the past few years, and then he's um you know he slowed down. You know, school is kind of more important. Thing now. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, that's first things first. You know, and like a lot of other kids, they you know they're trying to get into rap because they think they can make a lot of money, and they think that um you know it's an easy way out. But he's um you know he should be doing. Some so well, school is important that's first cool now I've got this joke question that I always ask so have fun with it a la fight club if you could fight any celebrity who would you fight and I've had answers from Elijah Muhammad to Gary Coleman so if Jizza could fight any celebrity as a joke who would you fight uh, I don't want to really be corny with this answer but it's, I don't I don't Mm. Which celebrities annoy you? I don't. I, that's 
that's a hard question because I don't, I don't, I can't think of one celebrity that I would want to fight. Okay. Right now. <laughs> I, I really can't. Like, I can't. Th- I can't think of one that I would want to fight. All right. So, what's the biggest misconception people have of the jizzer? That I read a lot of books. Okay. So you're not a big avid reader. Not like that. I read. I read. I mean, I read every now and then, but not like that. Okay. Now you're going to be coming to Vancouver later in the month. What can people expect from your live show? A lot of energy. Cool. A lot of energy. That's it. And a good show. That's what they can expect. A good show. A lot of energy. Brilliant. Great vibe.